In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create this granite-like texture using Affinity Photo's procedural texture filter. So these were all done with the same equation and then just different settings for it. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go to uh, this layer and I'm going to go into the filters and I have colors and then I have procedural texture and I save this as a preset and it's down here it's called granite and so there's um, the default uh, sort of a basic gray uh, granite look and it isn't perfect but um, that's uh, you know it's it sort of gives you that impression of granite and I, it looks pretty good when you apply it to text with the 3d look I think and so that's what it's like. Here's a colored granite. Here's the one I called red granite, sort of orange. And then a black with uh, little white specks. And then a white with little black specks. And then moss green. And then finally uh, yellow. So if you haven't seen um, my other videos, I cover most of the um, functions that I'm using in this in the other videos. Okay, so for this uh, equation, I first have three color vectors, vector 1, 2, and 3, set up to R, G, and B color settings, and then I have vector 2, which is relative x, relative y, over w. I have, um, and then I have a noise RTI and I tried a few different noise functions and I thought that one worked pretty well so I'm using noise RTI uh, and if you look at my other video on noise you can see what that one does and then I'm using smooth steps with the S curve and that's what this one is and so remember this is the if you look at the smooth steps SC Just going to put that down here as a reminder um, this one has an input of where it's um, zero up to a certain point and then it goes to one to a certain point and then an output where it's at one and then an output where it sort of slopes back down to zero and then you put your value your vector uh, field in there and so my the vector value field is this noise RTI. So the parameters I have for this, um, I've got an AV for the size of the noise so I can control that. So for this program I'm imagining it like I have a boundary between uh, colors 1 and 2 at this point and then I have a boundary between 2 and 3 and then I fade in that's my fade one and then I fade between boundaries one and two that's F one two and then I fade between boundaries two and three and then I have a fade out that's I call that F three so that was what I was thinking when I wrote this so those are all zero to one sliders and so then I can adjust those to fade in the um, effect or fade it out so let's look at that so here I have it again. Um, first of all, I have my red, green, blue, all uh, my different textures. And then um, I have my boundaries, boundary one and two, and boundary two and three. And then I have fading it in, fade between boundary one and two, and fade between boundary two and three. So I set it up that way. That seemed like an easy way to control it. Here's my AV. I set it to a pretty big value because I want my little grains of um, my granite to be pretty small. So here's the default. Looks like that. I'm going to do, um, so let's, I'll start with the default and I'm just going to adjust these. So one of the things I can do is change the colors. So let's try that. I'll make this one sort of a greenish color and then I can make this one 
um, maybe a color like that. And then I can make this one. Oh, maybe I'll just make this something like that. So I just adjust the colors till I get something I like. You might, uh, I could bring this down. Um, and then I can see, see a little more closely what's happening if I lower this and then I can bring this back up again. Um, and then I can fade between uh, the different uh, the different settings here. So this one, if I look at the boundary between one and two, I can move that. And so I can make it more green or more of the gray color. And this one, I can make it more yellow or more um, in between there. And then these sort of are the cross fading between those two colors. So I try to just set these to make it smoother, to have a smooth cross fading. Or depending on how I want it, I might want to have sort of an edge on that. Um, this one I can also uh, set these to fade in some black. But usually I just leave these set all the way down. This would have some white up top. Let me see if I can do that. Or no, I'd have black on the top. So usually I don't want that, so I'll just leave these all the way down. I guess I could leave those, I could probably delete those and um, uh, set them both to zero, and then it would probably still work, um, do most things I wanted it to do. Okay, once I get a good one, choose a um, setting for that, and then uh, save that as a preset. I'll put the um, formula for this in here um, in, in the uh, description so you can just grab it and use it if you like. Um, so once I've uh, done this, I can apply that to the layer. If I like the pattern, I can apply that to the layer. I can grab a artistic text tool put that on here and like that and um, just move this down put it over the top of that one just going to turn those off and then I think this usually looks good with a 3D effect on it oops I gotta make sure I select this layer there we go and now apply the 3D effect like that. And then uh, usually an outer shadow makes it look better too. And we can scale this object. Like that. So not a super fancy effect, but um, sort of a nice little effect. And you can get, again, here's some others uh, based on my presets that I saved. So when I came up with something I, I liked, I saved it as a preset. Okay, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any comments or questions.